Hey, this is Reagan Ram with Orpheus Audio Academy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make some Dreamwave music that sounds like this. In this world of neon chrome, where we dance till dawn or noon, we search for something that is real. You get the idea. Now real quick before diving into the tutorial, I have a free sample pack that you can grab in the description below or just go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash starter pack. All right, so let's dive into how I made this track. My understanding of Dreamwave is it's basically like Synthwave, but maybe a little bit dreamier. So that's what I went for here. So for the drums, I used Beatmaker Circuits by Ujam. I did a full review of this plugin. I'll have that linked in the description below. And by the way, you can get 20% off all of UJAM plugins by using my code OAA-20 at checkout. So this is really awesome because it has a, a lot of these vintage analog style drum sounds and it sounds like this. Pretty nice um, and I'm not really doing a whole lot to it. I do have some plugins here on the drum bus. Uh, I just have some tape saturation here using Waves J37 tape machine here. And by the way, links to all plugins are in the description and some SSL bus compression. So this is the verse, pretty simple. And then got some fills. Man, Beatmaker Circuits made this really easy to do because you can just drag and drop any different drum patterns or fills. Um, you can also play it if you want, but I really like um, for doing things quickly, just kind of using the drum patterns they have and then tweaking those. And then it makes, takes us to the pre-chorus where the drum, drums change up a little bit, but still Beatmaker Circuits. I think it's just a different drum kit. I already authorized this. Why are you wanting me to do this again? So I'm using a different drum kit here. So there are like 10 different drum kits inside of Beatmaker Circuits along with a ton of different presets which have different mix um, sets of different effects basically put onto the drums. So here I'm using the retro kit, little blippy blips, which really worked for kind of creating a little down section um, before uh, a kind of a decrease in energy section before going into the chorus. Well, it takes us to the chorus where I'm actually layering some drums here. Um, this is kind of a little trick to get even more energy out of your drums in the chorus. So I'm using Beatmaker Circuits here. Again, using the resistor kit this time. And I'm layering that with Beatmaker Candy, also by UJAM. Just the kick and the snare. And that's pretty much it for the drums. I do have some different drums here at the beginning part of the final chorus. So again, if you don't have these plugins, that's totally fine. Just use whatever samples you have. And then if you wanna make it more dream wavy, um, the key is just adding in some like saturation, like I have here, some tape saturation. And that's gonna help you make them sound a little bit more retro and dreamy and again you can grab my free sample pack in the description below which has a bunch of retro drum sounds and so then that takes us to the bass here and i only have the bass and the chorus and the first pre-chorus otherwise uh, i don't have any bass in my track which is kind of abnormal but i feel like it helped with the dreamy element of the track um, except for the choruses i still wanted the choruses to kind of be big and exciting and have lots of energy. Um, so it's kind of a mix of dream wave and dream pop maybe. Um, and so here is the bass. So for many of the synths in this song, I'm using Synth Control's Dream Wave Serum preset pack. And that includes the bass sample here, which is the Future Islands bass here from that Dream Wave pack. And so basically what you have is a running bass sound here. So you can see the cutoff is being automated here. And by the way, I have another tutorial that walks through how to create a running bass. I'll have that linked in the description below. Uh, or you can also grab my free Synthwave sound design cookbook, which has a bunch of different sound design recipes for creating Synthwave sounds. Again, that is included in the sample pack that I mentioned earlier. So you've got the running bass here, but on its own, it sounds a little bland. So this is here with no plugins. So 
So the major element that is adding that grittiness to the base is this free Szechuan saturator. And this is really nice. It's really simple, simple, but it can really um, add a really good, nice grittiness to your sound. So this is it without and with it in. Just turn the output gain down. So that's really nice. Uh, I've got a little bit of EQ here. Just taking out some of the boxy muddiness and kind of help those highs cut through a little bit more. I got a little bit of compression. And then one final thing we can do is we can add some chorus to this. So if we want to make it the bass sound really wide and really retro. So without it in, this is how the bass sounds. So it's kind of up to you if you want to include that or not. I'm going to go ahead and include it here. So that sounds nice. And then for the actual notes I'm playing here on the bass, I'm just following the root notes of the chords, which we will get to next. I just have this one EQ on here for the bass bus, but I don't only have one bass at a time, so I didn't really need this. I could have put it individually on each of these, but just decided to put it on the bus here to try to, um, the bass is the really far low end is being boosted. And I'm also kind of boosting some of these high mids here to help the bass cut through. So here are the chords and I got several different layers here in the chorus and doing something a little bit different in the verses. So I think we'll start with the verse here. This is the chord progression I came up with the, for the verses. So kind of the common theme with any kind of synth wave chords is you want to keep all the notes relatively close together and even use like one note all the way through like I'm doing here. Um, and so that's how we make this all these chords sound kind of dreamy and synth wavy. And I built these off of actually this free guitar loop I got from looperman.com. And it sounds like this. And I'm not really a music theory expert. I don't know. I don't read music. I don't really know much about how to go, how to listen to something, how to create chords from it. But that's kind of what I try to do here was I listened to this guitar and I tried to match what the guitar was doing with my pad here. So it might be a little easier to hear what this is doing by changing the instrument because I have like a synth piano part playing this up here. So we'll hear that. So the chords are changing as the guitar is changing. I tried to kind of match the tone of the guitar so it all sounds together. Uh, and then on the guitar itself, I just have some EQ trying to uh, take out the dark parts of that since I have more so my chords doing that, taking up those lower notes. And then uh, I'm automating in some more of this Tal Chorus LX. It's a nice free chorus plugin. And some uh, Enigma uh, flange effect here. This is Enigma by Waves. Um, but you could use whatever free plugin you have um, that does the flange effect. So this is the tal the chorus increases over time the enigma increases over time uh and then filter wise i'm actually opening up the filter so it's getting brighter so it's kind of increasing in and as it increases in energy you get more of those high frequencies coming in i'm also adding in more modulation effects um to 
kind of help it blend with the track and make it sound dreamy um, versus that more rustic acoustic guitar sound. Um, so that is what I'm doing there. And I really like these keys here. I might almost want to keep these in here. And by the way, for these keys, I am using Centronic. Um, I was using a different sound, so it's not actually Traveler. So this is dreamt about this time. Very punny. Big part of Dreamwave is basically pads and keys, dreamy pads and dreamy keys. And so that's what I got going on there. Then the chorus, I am, sounds like I have some super VHS static coming in from something, but I've got this pad here from Synth Control's Dreamwave pack. It's the Comet Nebula. So here is what this patch sounds like with no plugins. Very dreamy, I add some super VHS, add some saturation, and I'm adding some magic, which is like chorus, and also some reverb. A little EQ. And just a tad of compression. And then I am using Key Furiosa and Starlight, also from Synth Control's Serum preset pack. Some more pads here. I have these panned left and right. Oh, and with Comet Nebula, the big thing here is the one knob pumper tool here from Waves. I am adding a 1 16th rate to make this kind of gated sound here. And I have another one on here to add more of a side chain compression effect. And so side chain compression is where you kind of duck the sound with the kick drum. Um, although there's lots of other ways you can use sidechain compression. I have a full tutorial on sidechain compression linked in the description below. Um, so if we hear it with like the drums. So obviously it's not ducking with the kick drum, it's just, it's ducking on the downbeat, um, but it helps create more of a kind of dancey type of feel. And so that's something I might also want to do with the bass actually. Otherwise, in the pre-chorus here, we also have another Centronic sound here. It's a classic electric piano. And I have the guitar again, but I'm adding some finisher dynamo. And for some reason, the UI is not working. That is weird. It's just showing the controls, not the UI. I have never had this happen before. I know there's a setting That's kind of making that wobbly sound. And then I've got the filter opening up on this, that super VHS static on there. I'll probably want to automate that out as the chorus comes in there. So let me just do that right now. I'll have it a little bit higher on the intro. Pull it down. Interesting static effects there. Okay. I think that's about it for my chords here. Um, across on my chords bus here to have some little bit more 
super VHS saturation, so they're all getting a little bit of saturation. Uh, EQ shaping it, uh, I'm just cutting out that low end, so only my bass and my 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 kick is hitting in that low low end there. And, and also just some subtle tube compression here, adding just some more warmth to everything. Um, so let's see, as all these chords are in here, what they sound like with this compression. So it just kind of warms them up a little bit. This is also a free plugin here. We got two different sets here, one for the verse, one for the chorus. So here are my verse arps. So this is what they look like, and they're just jumping back and forth. I kind of got my root note in the bottom. That's kind of what I like to do for arps, is I'll have a root note that is kind of the foundation of the arp, and then I'll have the secondary sound bouncing up and down the scale. And so that's what we have here. And since I kind of have two notes playing at a time instead of just one, I decided to split these up and pan them slightly. So I've one panned slightly left and one pan slightly right. So that's what the left looks like. That's what the right looks like. And then these are both using the key blender from Synth Controls Serum Pre Dreamwave preset pack. And then the only really effect I have on these is some bit crushing, very subtle bit crushing. So it's a little extra grittiness. You hear it more when it goes up, up an octave here. So yeah, it just kind of gets a little duller without that. Then I was trying to kind of control the harshness here. So I have some EQ taking out some of the harsher frequencies here. Also some multiband compression, trying to tamp those down as well. I also have a little bit playing here as kind of help transition from the pre-chorus to the chorus. And also has a little bit of Abbey Road vinyl here. So here's a vinyl tool. There's also a free vinyl plugin you can check out by Isotope. I'll have that linked in the description. And then that takes us to our chorus here, where again we have this blender ARP Plux kind of going back and forth. And then they also, I added in this Syntronic sound, which is Pizzicato Angel here by Syntronic. And so that's all together sounds like this. So it kind of adds a dreamy haze to it, kind of trying to add to that kind of wall of sound concept here for that dreamy shoegaze type effect, um, but still trying to maintain some semblance of those that plucky arp with the the key the key blender that's uh, panned to either side. Then it also goes up an octave here. And that's it all the way through. So that is it for the ARP. Not a lot of effects on these. Again, just kind of controlling the harshness and a little bit of bit crushing. That is it. Takes us to our leads where I have some more tape saturation. That's kind of the name of the game here is just adding in saturation where you can find places to add it. Also Super VHS, 
just a little bit of reverb, a little bit of saturation, and then some multiband compression here. It looks like I'm taming some of the harshness here as well in the leads. And then here I'm doing quite a bit of layering. I have the lead Deja Vu from the Dreamwave preset pack. I have um, this up an octave and also have a lower octave here. So it's kind of layered up. And then I have panned left and right some Syntronic sounds as well. So the Deja Vu is a little bit more dreamy, has a little bit more sustain. And then these other sounds here are a little bit pluckier, trying to add just a little bit more weight to that lead. And then all together, here's what the track sounds like. And so that takes me to the vocals. Use quite a few vocal layers here. So starting with the verse here. So when it comes to vocal layers, it's really helpful to add an extra bit of energy, a bit of boost to your vocals to layer them up, um, just makes them sound a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker and wider. Here in this case, um, I'm using just a very simple uh, lead vocal here, and then I add some background vocals just coming in intermittently here and there. So let's see, we'll have this lead vocal here. In this world of neon chrome, where we dance. And then I have the background vocals here, they're up an octave. Um, but they also are adding some harmony effects as well. So I'll show you in a second. In this world of neon chrome, where we dance till dawn or noon, we search for something that is real. To create this vocal harmony, all I did was sing the vocal melody up an octave. And then here in the tuner, I experimented with moving the notes around until I found something I liked. Uh, and then I just re-sang the part that I created. So I think originally this was like down here, an E. And I moved it up to a B. And so that's, what's you, that's how you can easily create vocal harmonies if you aren't really great at hearing them in your head or coming up with them on the spot. Um, all right, especially if that, right, you're singing and the actual melody is throwing you off because you just want to sing the melody. So this is kind of a good way to come up with a vocal harmony. And so we'll hear that now just on its own. And then with the actual melody. In this world of neon chrome, we dance till dawn or noon. We search for something that is real. And that's how I created the harmony there. And of course we have two takes of this. One is panned hard right, one's panned far left. And that is that. Then I got some background vocals in here, just singing some O's. And again, kind of doing the same thing here. I have something going down the center. Then I have one pan left, one panned right. And I think I have some higher parts up here, pan left and right. This is These background vocals, I have some Butch Vig on here by uh, Waves. This is a really awesome tool. You can easily add in some tube and solid state um, saturation. You can have some simple EQ here. You can increase the lows, the presence in the air. You can do a high cut. You can do a low cut. Uh, of course, you got your input and your output. And then you've got also some compression you can add in here and a de-esser all in one. So it's really great for vocals. Uh, if you want to add some grittiness to your vocals. In this case, I'm adding a lot of air and also a little bit of saturation. So it's kind of gritty and also pushes them to the background a bit. And then we got more layers here, uh, kind of the second half here of the verse. I go down an octave now. So I went up an octave with the melody here with the harmony here and then i am just dropping down an octave here going even lower this is the way we need to go launched by orion's crossbow turn away now when this is the way we need to go launched by orion's crossbow and i couldn't quite sing that low because it's pretty darn low 
Um, if we look at this, um, we're going down to, what is this? E1. Yeah, E1. So that's pretty darn low. Um, I think I have like a three and a half oct octave range, um, but that is not included. So um, that's where tuning comes in and you drop it down. And to make it sound a little bit more realistic, um, what you can do um, is, so here you can do the formant shift and shift the formant down. Um, so maybe I'll shift the formant down even a little bit more. So I'll help it sound a little bit more realistic. This is the way we need to go. Launch by also decreasing the vibrato a bit. This is the way we need to go. Launch by Orion's crossbow. Turn away now when you're. So on its own, it sounds kind of robotic, doesn't sound great, but it's just meant to be add a little bit extra oomph, a little bit more body um, to the vocals here. So you're not gonna really hear what's going on too much. This is the way we need to go Launched by Orion's crossbow so That's just a little vocal layering trick there And then of course we got, we, got, we got the high harmony But we also have the melody as well With a couple of high parts added in here as well So now we got five different vocal layers And to top it off I also added a vocoder layer So now the whole vocal layer sounds like this This is the way Launched by Orion's crossbow Turn away now and kneel so We got a big vocal layer there And so looking at the vocoder here I created this using the Tau vocoder here This is a free vocoder synth And it's a little tricky to set up And so and especially in Logic It's different than in other DAWs So to set this up uh, I just created this instrument track here and then put the vocoder as the instrument. And so you're not gonna find this in like the actual instruments here. So if I go to Tau, um, there's Tau Noisemaker. It's another Tau, free Tau synth that I downloaded, but that is not what we want. So we wanna actually go down to MIDI controlled effects here and there is Tau vocoder. So we load that up and so that's what we have here. Now you wanna choose what audio it's actually gonna be using to generate the sound. And so here I chose audio five, which is right here. I just named Vox vocoder. So you just need some kind of audio that is going to actually, um, that the vocoder is gonna draw from to create the sound. So that's what I'm using here. And so now our vocoder is good to go. We just need the actual notes that we want the vocoder to sing, to play. And so I took the notes from the actual harmony. And so to do that, I just went in here, I believe. Yeah, and so I um, did the flex tool here. So I did flex pitch. So that generated all the notes. And then I go to edit and create MIDI track from the flex pitch data. So that actually takes what I sang and turns it into MIDI. And then I need a little cleaning up, um, quantizing and all that. And that was how I was able to get the melody there. And so now we have the vocoder. And I think now that I'm hearing this, it's actually singing the wrong lyrics. So I might want to choose a different audio source. So I think I'll just choose the, the lead audio or lead vocal here, which is this. So let's find that. Lead vocal, which is audio two apparently. So now we'll hear what that's doing. Nice, so it's doing the same notes, but it's now singing different lyrics based off the, the vocal track I selected there. Um, by the way, you'll probably wanna turn this chorus effect on here. It sounds a lot better, so without the chorus. And then you got an EQ in here, and you have different presets, um, so you can kind of change how it actually sounds. So that's nice, but maybe we want to double this up, make it a little thicker. So maybe we can drop this down an octave. This is 
the way we need Pretty cool, and that's how you can set up the Tile Vocoder inside of Logic. So that takes me to the pre-chorus here, and I was thinking about using the vocoder, but I ended up not using that. And so here I got six vocal layers, I believe, and I just am singing the regular melody three times, so I have three takes of that, one going down the center, one left, one right, and then, then which would be this one right here. And then I have singing it up an octave three times, one going down the center, one pan left, one pan right, to kind of make a bigger chorus sound uh, here, make it kind of sound like it's an actual like chorus of vocals. That sounds like this. Who needs the guidance of the stars when you have the bright morning star? So it needs some cleaning up. There's some like clicks and pops that could use cleaning up. Um, sometimes the flex pitch tool by Logic does that. It kind of in introduces some pops and clicks or some things we can do to clean that up later, um, but that'd probably be a separate video. So let me know if you want to see more tutorials on like cleaning up audio. And then we got the chorus here where we have five layers here. So we have the main, again, the main melody three times, one going on the center, one left, one right. That's how you can just make those bigger sounding vocals. And also up an octave pan left and right. Can I get some hope, please? Don't leave me out here to freeze. These story dust memories. So that's with all the layers and on its own, you can see it sounds a lot different. Can I get some hope, please? Don't leave me out here. So this makes it a lot bigger. They also have some background vocals in here. And these are very, very affected with more Butch Vig. I got a major high cut going on here. I might open this up just a tad. Um, some saturation as well. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And it's also low cutting, compression, de-essing. And it's got some air presence and low boost. So this sounds very interesting. And we also got six layers going on here. With covering two different octaves again. So we also got some breaths in here that we probably want to take out. And I, I had more parts in here. Um, but I ended up cutting those and inc only including that on the final verse. And so when you do that, it's a good idea to like fade in a little bit. Not enough that it's like noticeable, but it can remove that popping clicking sound. So let's see. I, I think I didn't fade this one. There we go. And so then all together, the background and the lead. Can I get some hope, please? Don't leave me out here to freeze. These story dust memories seem to be my only reprieve. So they're very, very much in the background, but it adds kind of a ghostly texture to the background of the vocals, which I liked. And then going into the next verse, we're doing pretty much the same thing, except um, we've got some other higher vocals in here as well, um, especially on the second half here. Neon lights flicker and fade, but the memories remain of endless nights and endless dreams. We drive up. Pretty cool. Bridge, I'm basically doing the same thing I did for the pre-chorus with the different layers. It's just they're spaced out a little bit more. Hold on to send fast on the promise. And again, these all need cleaned up 
because there's, I think, my children screaming in the background. I think there's some screaming in the background right now while I'm recording. So this is why it's a good idea to maybe have some soundproofing in your home studio. Chorus-wise, I have the full background vocals here, um, not just what I cut out. And I got some different vocals, lead vocals here too, for the first half of this chorus because it doubles, so it's kind of like a different version of the chorus, and then then the then the same chorus that you remember from earlier in the song. And then it's the same thing, but with more layers. I also added some really high layers here, some parts singing a different melody here. Yeah, it went really high there. So mixing wise, with these vocals, we have the main vocal bus here, where I've got kind of a basic EQ curve here going on. I've got a little bit of DSing going on here as well. Some very subtle compression. Also have a little bit of vintage EQ here by Waves, um, boosting at, up a, a high shelf here at 12K, and then also removing some of the harshness here at 3.8K and giving a high pass filter as well. And lastly, I have some multi-band compression with TDR Nova, also a free plugin here. And so just trying to take out some of the harshness and muddiness here as it emerges. Seem to be my You can hear those, as those background vocals come in that are more boosted in the high end uh, and have some of that high end saturation. I was doing a little bit more co uh, compression there. And so that's it for the main vocal bus. And for the lead vocals here, the lead vocal bus, uh, got some more DSing here with Waves Sibilance, um, another EQ curve, some more multi band compression, looks like more DSing and some tube compression here, some subtle tube compression, trying to glue together all those lead vocals. And I also have some smooth operator here as well, um, trying to smooth out the vocal some more. So we'll hear these then, without any of these plugins in and with them in. Seem to be my only reprieve. Can I get some hope, please? Don't leave me out here to freeze. So you can hear it kind of glues everything together. And they also have some reverb, some going to chroma verb here. Um, it looks like it just has some vocal ambience. Um, so some ambient vocal reverb there and also some towel reverb. Very subtle amount there for all the, the lead vocals. And then for the actual like main lead vocals here with amongst all these different layers, um, I have a little bit more EQ going, or more reverb going on here. The send going to crystalline, um, to a long haul. So that would be like this lead vocal here. Build a neon chrome, where we dance till dawn or noon. We search for something that is real. And so if it's individual tracks, here's where I add more custom EQ for each track. So we have some very subtle compression here, just taking out the very high peaks. And then we got some a little bit more aggressive EQ here with the 1176 by Waves. Dance till dawn or noon. We search for something that is real. And then some also LA2A. Dance till dawn or noon. We search for something that is real. And finally, some more EQ here, boosting at 10K and also moving some more 
harshness here at 3.8. Then everything else kind of has the same thing, just some compression, a compressor taking out the very high peaks, and then another compress com uh, compressor to then smooth things out. And that's mostly it for there. And we got background vocals. We already kind of covered this with the Butch Vig uh, and also some tube compression to help glue things together. And then I have some verse background vocals here. Um, those are the chorus. And we're kind of doing the same thing. We all are going to the same reverb, the towel reverb. And I got the Butch Vig vocals on as well. And so then on the mix bus, I just have a couple tools here. I've got my linear phase EQ, adding in this little curve here, taking out the sub bass and the super highs here, since we don't really need those. Some SSL bus compression, and also some smooth operator here, adding in a little bit of uh, EQ and compression as well. So we'll listen to this now without any of these in and then with them in. All right, now let's listen to the final result.
And that is my Dreamwave song. This is called Stardust Memories. If you enjoyed it and want to be notified when this song goes public on Spotify and other streaming platforms, then just sign up for my email list. I'll have a link to this in the description or just go to andromedacoastmusic.com slash list. Also, once again, big thank you to Daniel of Synth Control for his amazing Serum preset pack. Be sure to check him out. And one last thing, right now we actually have a giveaway going on right now. If you go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash giveaway, you can enter to potentially win this exact Dreamwave Serum preset pack. Not only that, but you'll also win a 50% off coupon to my Synthwave Mastery course, which covers in detail my step-by-step -step process for creating Synthwave music. So if you wanna win some free presets and get a massive discount to a great digital course on creating Synthwave music, then be sure to go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash giveaway. If you found this video helpful, drop a like. And if you wanna check out another tutorial that goes in depth on how I create a Synthwave song, then click on the screen right now. With that, have an awesome day and keep creating.